I haven't read that gospel lesson. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say anything. But I guess I have to say at least a word. The lessons you heard were the ones we should have read on Sunday had we not transferred All Saints Day to it. You'll recall that on this past Sunday, I got up and went on about what it means to be blessed and how God comes to us in our weak moments, our lowest points in our lives, times of despair and loss, and in those times stirs up the gifts God has already put into our hearts for the building of the kingdom. I ended with this rhetorical flourish telling people to go and have a blessed day, and with that oratorical triumph, I sat down and then went off into the sunset. It's a good thing that it is not in our tradition to have the congregation talk back to the preacher immediately after the sermon. I'm sure that in the course of 15 years, there are many occasions, I was going to say more than one, but it's probably many, when somebody should have stood up when I sat down and said, yeah, and... So, what does that mean? And what are you supposed to do with that? Certainly, this idea that we go through our lives in a state of blessedness, because we go through our lives in a state of, of loss and confusion, requires some unpacking. And so I think it is useful, indeed it is a gift from God, that we get these two lessons we heard read today. I think they begin to tell us something about what that means and how it is we're supposed to live because of it. In the Christian education uh, series that we just finished, I talked about Scientology this past Sunday, and there is a scholar of religion who has described Scientology as a religion of practice rather than a religion of belief. Uh, You can perhaps understand what that means in, in the case of other religions you may know about, but I think it is applicable to us as well It seems as if in the lesson from the gospel, the Pharisees and the others whom Jesus is criticizing do pretty well with religion of practice. They seem to know what the rules are, and they seem to follow the rules, at least in an outward way. The trouble is religion of belief. They don't seem to have quite the right uh, motivation behind it. Because when the chips are down and they have to decide what they will do, will they actually live what it is they have been telling other people to do, it sounds like they don't. There is something in that, that there is religion of belief and religion of practice, and to have one without the other somehow falls down. St. Paul, for all that he's being a little bit self-promoting in the lesson we heard read today, which is not uncommon for St. Paul at times, We probably would have had to know him to know what he really meant by it. But he is making that point that somehow living humbly and doing these things without assuming that we're perfect in doing them really is the godly way. And somehow, in some mysterious way, allows our religion of belief to shine through our religion of practice. It sounds like arrogance and and thinking too much of yourself is what gets in the way of being able to do the right thing when the chips are down. So we get a little clue, I think, as to what you and I are supposed to be doing. I don't think there's anything in these that tells us we're in any way off the hook for either believing what it is we have been taught or doing what it is we have been taught or that we are inspired to do as a consequence of our belief. Clearly, there is no, no message in this that we're supposed to be arrogant or imagine that we've got it all right. But I do think, if we take St. Paul just with a little grain of salt, there is something to that idea that we've got to get in there and do it. Somehow, the, the, the work of blessedness is to get in and get busy, get our hands dirty, and discover, in fact, that all that we believe, it will be, made visible in what it is that we do if we do it in the right spirit. That at least should be comfort to us that we can't make too many mistakes if we at least make all of our mistakes with full awareness of our own humility. And with that, perhaps we have some small bit of crumb of information to take away and begin to live our lives of blessedness. Let it be so for you and for me now and always. Amen.